Coming up on Tech News Today, the conservation of judicial idiocy. One judge finally realizes IP addresses are not people. Another judge thinks, ah, Mac a PC, it doesn't matter. Stop your wine. And also a PC rental store gets caught spying on its users. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Slingbox, which just turned your iPad into a television. Magic! Slingbox introduces their new iPad app, so you can now watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you take it. Check it out at Best Buy or slingbox.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zaktar. And joining us from across the Atlantic Ocean in London, England... Mr. Mark Turpin, a.k.a. Terpster. Welcome, Terpster! Terpster. Terpster. Hello, yay. Good to be back. How was your royal wedding experience? What did you um, do on, uh, on the day? pretty good. Just hang out at the back of the abbey. I didn't want to kind of upstage the, uh, the happy couple. Right. Um, but it was good. No, it's nice. Um, it was a, you know, quite a small affair, really. I, I thought, you know, it wasn't Intimate. too grand. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was quite nice. It was it, nice. It, in all seriousness, did uh, did you and your friends care much? Did you watch it on TV? Because I, you know, all the reports I heard is that more people were interested in it outside of England than inside. Um, no, I think I think a lot of English people did watch it. Um, I watched it. There was, um, you know, like I said, just a whole host of different hats and dresses, which you know really kind of a key to a lot of my kind of beliefs and. You know things I enjoy. Um, plus, I don't know. Did you see Pippa Middleton? Uh, oh she, yeah, she very. looked very lovely, didn't mm -hmm. she? Yes, she did. She is my new favorite. And and not is she available? For. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. So, I don't know. Well, well, there we go. Wouldn't see, that, wouldn't that be a match made in heaven? Yeah, you could would, be the brother-in-law of a dude, duchess, and a dude, yep. and a dude, <laughs> dude of <laughs> Cambridge, I believe. <laughs> Yeah. This title. Dude and Duchess. <laughs> All right, let's let's get to some tech news here. Uh, and, and, and enough of this uh, honoring of the legitimate monarchy. Uh, let's talk about BlackBerry and Microsoft uh, partnering up. RIM says they're going to install Bing as the default search engine. Well, actually, as the preferred search engine. Uh, and map provider on all of their phones. They've already done this on the BlackBerry Playbook, uh, the, but they are, they're going to uh, have them as the preferred provider. Now, the reason I stopped myself from saying default is that it isn't quite default. A Microsoft spokeswoman said that Bing would be the default search and maps provider on new RIM devices when they're presented to carriers, but the carrier could change the default, which means that Bing is the preferred. So and if the carriers don't mess with it, you'll still get Bing. But the carriers aren't allowed to strip Bing out for any reason. They would just be allowed to give another option. Right. So Change ultimately, it would yeah. be the customer's option. That sounds about right. I mean, the other thing about Bing is, I mean, when we saw those numbers last week, Microsoft showed their online division not doing so well. But if they join up with BlackBerry and you see Bing on every BlackBerry device, that could help them out maybe next year or next quarter. We might see better numbers because... This means you might get used to Bing on your BlackBerry, and then you go, oh, I'm on my desktop. I'm going to check Bing. Yeah, Bing, Bing is making inroads as a, as a uh, desktop search engine, about 30% of the, of the market share. Mm -hmm. But as a mobile search engine, they have a ways to go, and this would help tweak up the numbers. Although, is it also possibly seen as two uh, institutions that are sinking, grabbing onto each other, you know? <laughs> Well, that's, that's I think. I mean, not that yeah. Microsoft is sinking, but Microsoft's mobile strategy has has been in trouble, and so is Rims. If you look at Google, though, and Android, you know, obviously they're just big smelly poo poo heads, and so we shouldn't be, you know, we should we should hang out. Yeah, come on, Microsoft, let's go. You know, I think that's that's probably the discussion. Is it was like pff, Google? That's that's like saying Android is on BlackBerry. Ugh, let's get some Bing in the house. You know, and that's that. I think that was their strategy. That makes I didn't no really sense at all. Attention. I have no idea what no? you're talking about. <laughs> that's that makes perfect sense. That was basically the keynote. I just <laughs> shortened it. Uh, I mean, 
how much did Microsoft pay for a distribution deal like this? Yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't admit how much they're getting, but we're we're talking a large chunk of change to get on there. So this is a gamble on Microsoft's part. Um and I guess Rim's part too, because um didn't Microsoft's online services division lose quite a few million dollars uh in the last quarter? Yeah. So they lost some money. But yeah. I mean, the thing is, if you try out Bing, I mean, we've talked about this like off camera a lot. Like, is it good enough that are people going to, to stick to it? I mean, MSN search didn't catch on and whatever search before that didn't catch on. But people do use Bing if it's there. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's not so horrible that I have to switch it right back to Google because the results are pretty close. Yeah, that's kind of the problem I have with um, Microsoft saying, well, the carriers can, can add other uh, um, search options. I mean, why wouldn't a carrier add another option? Because they just want their customers. Well, it's not to be adding happier. a search option. It's it's making a different default. So it's it would be it would essentially be saying, yeah, we're going to we're going to sell your BlackBerry on AT and T, but we're going to make the default search engine Google, which means nobody's going to use anything else. Well, that's yeah, that's kind of my point. It's yeah. like preferred to who? If you have other options, I mean, I'm a I'm a Google search user, and I just rather use that as the default. I think if yeah. I was if I was given the option, I don't care what you know who who's calling what preferred. Uh, in, in previous deals that Microsoft has made with competitors, like you know, Rim and Rim and Microsoft are competitors in the mobile space. Mm -hmm. uh, they made peace with America Online. They were they were both competitors for internet access. Uh, they made peace with uh, uh, Real Networks. They were they were in a lawsuit over the digital media business. Uh, they've also uh, partnered up with Yahoo. Uh, not, how how do you when you think hear about all those deals? The does, touch of death. How does it sound? Yeah. I mean, AOL's making a comeback. I'll, I'll give them that. Uh, Real is, is not... Oh, not I love Real. Real is so retro. If I go on a website and I see a Real video download, I'm like, whoa, this is like the 90s. This is yeah. great. You see it right there next yeah. to it's optimized for Netscape 3.0 button. Oh, exactly, yeah. That's um, why you know it's pe pedigree and heritage. I'm, my, I'm racking my brain for the last Microsoft partnership that went really well. I mean, in Intel? Apple. Do you think that partnership back then and they got sued, that whole funness? Or are you talking about when they paid money? No, in? Office. They sell a ton of Office. Was well, that really a partnership so much as they're just providing software? Yeah, they had to, they had to, they had to get some, they had to have some talks. I think the, the, there's some agreement that, that was I think made. the Wintel thing was the last one that wor worked well because I know they worked with Toshiba on the first Zoom. Ford. Now, uh, oh, that's a good, a good one. That's a good point. That is yeah. a very good partnership. So that's one good partnership <laughs> and a number of colossal failures. All right, but let's maybe see. the trend is that they're due a good one. Exactly. So maybe it's going to be a good one. It's like putting does, the does, not hot hitter up in baseball, you know, because he's bound to get a hit. Right? It's yeah. his turn. But <laughs> let's like, go what, with the cold hand. And Windows 7, like, um, does this impact that at all? Does this make them, you know, is it going to be more transferable or more, you know, approachable to users of a Nokia on Windows 7 phone? You know, is it friendly? I don't know. I like I like Bing. I think I mean you had your Bing experiment. You yeah. didn't stick with it, but there was nothing particularly wrong with it. You liked it for certain things. It's just not good enough to make me switch, but it's yeah. but it's not bad. Right. All right. Let's move on to some other big news today. Uh, we talked yesterday about Sony's uh, online entertainment site being hacked. Uh, Sony has issued a press release. Almost 25 million extra user information accounts uh, have been hacked. Twelve thousand seven hundred. Uh, Non-U.S. credit card numbers uh, with their uh, expiration dates uh, feared stolen. 10,700 direct debit listing bank account numbers. Uh, these were a part of an outdated database from 2007. Sony is notifying each customer individually and will grant customers 30 days of additional time in Sony Online Entertainment to go with the 30 days of curiosity and PlayStation Network time that they got. Uh it's interesting that Sony is is making a point to contact everyone, but is also in the same statement warning customers to be aware of any contact via email or telephone or postal service purporting to be official Sony correspondence because Sony will not contact you in any way, including by email to ask for your credit card number, social security number, or other personally identifiable, identifiable information. That makes sense to all of us, right? But imagine how many people are, are going to get scammed because this is the perfect opportunity for a scammer to email someone saying, it's Sony, we need to verify all this information. You've heard of our, our, um, our little issue that we had recently and we're here to help. 
And the other scary thing is if you take a look at the press release that Sony put out, this is exactly the same thing that they had for the PSN uh, debacle. I mean, it's scary that they could just go, well, we'll cut and paste this stuff because it went horribly wrong there uh, and it went horribly wrong again. I mean, on, on the bright do you side. Want, do you want them to rewrite it from scratch? It's, I just think it's, <laughs> it's just a shame that they happen to already have boilerplate. Like, it's just like, oh, I great. Think I think they were just happy to have a small win there. Someone in the kind of press release writing department was all like, oh, guys, we can just use the PSN one, you know? And so they were like, Phew, that's one less thing to worry about. That's efficient. I'm more interested in seeing, like, is EverQuest 2 going to see, a, like, a rise in subscriptions after? Is everyone going to go play it for a month because they haven't? And they're like, oh, it's free. And then they're going to be like, oh, it's a great game. I'm going to keep playing. You know, I wonder if maybe... This is just one big marketing ploy. I doubt it, but maybe it might turn out <laughs> that way. It's and then, like, it's so yeah, crazy. It's a it new Coke style. Work. New Coke. Exactly. Just tick off every user you have, destroy all your trust, and then people will try an online game. Sony exactly. is, is actually, uh, I, b I believe, uh, sitting in their offices. The folks responsible for this right now, going, "If only, if only that's what we're at, what it was." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because imagine they went and had the huge press conference and fell on their swords and said, you know, we are going to make this right and we're going to bring back the PlayStation Network by the end of the week. And then the next day they're like, oh, wait, we missed something. There's another yeah. group. Oh. And this time we can actually be sure to say there are credit card numbers gone, even though we're still not sure if the PlayStation Network credit card numbers were accessed. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a huge black eye. Sony will survive oh. this. I, I think exactly. I think they will they will end up you know people will still use Sony products they'll still buy Sony products they'll still use Sony online services uh, but this is going to be a joke amongst people for a long time and it, and it's going to have a negative impact on them. When they say but, an outdated <laughs> database from 2007 uh, was compromised, do they mean it's outdated because almost nobody would have those same credit card numbers anymore? I don't think they specified in the press release. My guess. I'm sort of like, they, yeah, did, they haven't said. I probably don't have. We yeah, can, my numbers have changed, but a lot no, of no, people. No, no, no. My, my speculation is that it is a database that they haven't used since 2007, that they probably migrated to a new database mm -hmm. and either were still. They hadn't migrated over every user account, so still had it around in case they needed to access it, or they disabled it but hadn't deleted it. Got it. But also, I mean, I look at it and I think, like, is this going to drive new revenue? Like, are we going to see people buying, like, PSN, you know, kind of currency cards rather than using credit cards? And I think, well, it's safer and easier if I don't put my details into a system. I'll just go into a brick-and-mortar store and buy a code, which I can then use on PSN or, in this case, you know, SOE games. So I find it, I think it could be quite interesting to see what kind of comes of it, kind of how much money is made through this practice, through this whole event. You can bet your life that Sony is going to have the most secure network of all of them after this. And yeah, now's well, the time to join. Here's hoping. Yeah, well, <laughs> wait. Wait until it comes well, yeah, back up. Yeah, yeah. Give it a couple <laughs> well, you weeks. Can't join Give right it now. Week. Everything's down. Yeah. And then join. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, IP addresses, we've argued over and over on this show, are not people, but judges have often found that, you know, IP address, that's good enough. Go and arrest him. We've talked about all the raids and things like that. Well, federal judge Harold Baker has finally come to the conclusion that IP addresses are not people. They're not the same thing. John Steele uh, was requesting expedited discovery in an intellectual property case so that he could turn his list of allegedly copyright infringing IP addresses into names. Federal Judge Baker said, could expedited discovery be used to wrest quick settlement even from people who have done nothing wrong? The embarrassment of public exposure might be too great, the legal system too daunting and expect expensive for some to ask. Uh, whether a porn company has competent evidence to prove its case. So he's like, you can't just go around fishing for uh, saying, yeah, find out who once used one of these IP addresses. I'm going to send him a threatening letter. Uh, because then anybody could just say, hey, you know what? I just want to I, I just want to accuse a bunch of people of stuff, and hopefully some of them will pay me. That, uh, Baker is, is kind of done with Steele. They've had some go-rounds previous to this. And finally, Judge Baker is coming to the conclusion, look, an IP address is not the same as a person. you got to come up with some better evidence than that before I'm going to grant expedited discovery. It's always pleasant. I'm giving Judge Baker a hand. Exactly. It's always pleasant when we see a judge who actually understands technology, or at least his law clerk has explained it to him well enough to go, yeah, it's not the same thing. So it's, it's, it's so rare that we get to say, nice going, Judge. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, probably what happened here is that uh, John Steele has pushed this judge's button so many times with so many different uh, ways of trying to get around the law that he's done with him. And it, it actually pushed him into to 
uh, realising this. But, I mean, I think we also lucked out that it was a porn company because the judge was all like, look, because it's kind of a little bit kind of shady, you know, we don't want to make this because people may just pay just so that they don't get included in a porn case. Yeah. And so, you know, if this had been music or if this had been something, you know, more socially accepted, then... I wonder, you know, if we'd ever have got this decision or this conclusion out of it. But it's good now there's precedent and now people can use this, you know, as a reason as, you know, hopefully it'll get adopted elsewhere. Yeah, and, and, and Torrent Freak uh, calls this a possible landmark ruling. I don't know if that's overstating it. Uh, it's it's just a, a, a ruling against an expedited discovery. How, yeah. how precedent-setting is that? Really? Well, I mean, even if this was like in the opinion of a case or something, I mean, it's only in the District Court of, of Illinois, so it'd be persuasive everywhere else. It's not like it's going to be a precedent that, oh, look, it happened once. It's, it's not going to be yeah. like that. If this was the Supreme Court or something, totally different story. All right, let's take a, a quick break and uh, thank our sponsor, Slingbox. You can watch your TV anywhere you go. In fact, when I, uh, when I go visit Terpster one of these days, I'll be mm. able to uh, hang out at, at Terpster's Pad in England and watch all of my U.S. television shows. And likewise, I'm coming over to America in June. I'm bringing my iPad with me. I got my sling box back home, and I can watch all of that over there, hopefully on someone else's Wi-Fi, because data charges. Ooh. Yeah. And remember that, you know, if you open up your IP address to Terpster, you will be uh, tracked you, to be you watching what he be watches on the Slingbox. In a lawsuit. Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. But, but Sorry about that. Nevertheless, Slingbox allows you to watch your television anywhere you go, on your iPad. You can find Slingbox or see a demo at Best Buy or check it out at slingbox.com slash twit. Use that URL so they know you came from listening to us. Slingbox on your home TV now appearing on iPads everywhere around the world. It's pretty great. All right, Amazon tablet. The rumors have been kicking around for a while now, and a new one from Digitimes claims that Taiwan's Quanta computer has orders from Amazon to build a tablet PC with screens produced by Hydus. Hydus is a subsidiary of e-ink, but the screen wouldn't be e-ink. The screen would oh. use fringe field switching panels, uh, which are produced by the subsidiary, but are similar to IPS displays. Those are the kind used in the iPad, too. One of the confusing things is that the story running around is that e-ink is going to be providing the touch panels. And e-ink used to be a company called PVI. They have patents on e-ink technologies, but they make more things than just e-ink displays. So you're not going to see necessarily a black and white tablet. We're talking probably more like an LCD, which makes a lot more sense considering Amazon has a lot of things going for it that would make sense for a tablet, including competition from the Nook Color. The rumor has it that uh, the tablet would ship in the second half of 2011, they're expecting monthly orders of 700,000 to 800,000. Uh, Quanta, uh, the co computer, the, the company that is ordering these screens, uh, makes the playbook. Also is apparently working on some tablets for Sony. Uh, and uh, it adds a little credence to this idea of Amazon coming out with a tablet. A tablet with a, an LCD screen using their, you know, we've talked about it before, using the built-in mm. Amazon services like video, like books, uh, and and uh, uh, the online storage services, video books, music, they live have, streaming, music, right? And the cloud locker yeah. thing they just started. I mean, they have a lot of reason, and the, a lot of reason to have their own tablet. But on top of that, I still don't think they've released iOS versions of like things to access your Amazon Video on demand. So it seems like they're holding on to this for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I've been waiting for you know. I would buy a lot more Amazon Video if I was able to access it on other places than just my desktop PC or my laptop. PC rental store uh, Aaron is being accused of using webcams and keyloggers on customers. A Wyoming couple is filing a class action lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for Western District of Pennsylvania against the rent-to-own chain. Uh, they accuse Aaron's of spying on them at home using their rented computer's webcam as well as a keylogger and taking screenshots of the couple's activities. This is the craziest story uh, for a variety of reasons. First of all, I didn't really realize people did rent to own computers. Uh, it makes sense. It you seems don't have the money my first for the reaction, computer off, you know, yeah, up front. My, my first reaction to that is like, ooh, that puts your data in a dangerous place. I know. What if you end up having to give your computer back? Well, well it was more dangerous than I thought. Yeah, I mean, I guess um, a PC rental agent was something that was installed, created by a company called Designerware, and it keeps track of rent-to-own computers, 
and the purpose is to lock out customers who fail to pay. And I guess this couple ended up paying off their computer in full back in October of last year. It was even ahead of schedule. For some reason, the payment didn't go through correctly, and a store manager showed up at these people's home to get the computer back and said, I've got a picture of you taken with the webcam that's attached to the computer of you using it after the date that you stopped paying. What? Well, now what I want to know is why do you need a picture of them using it? To if you prove, haven't gotten it that back, using it? who cares if they were using it? If right. they have it and they haven't paid their bill, you take it back. You don't need to prove whether they were using it or not. <laughs> Well, perhaps Maybe they weren't there's... wearing any pants, though, and so they thought they could get them similar to the porn company, just on a kind of shame. I'm going to show your friends you computing in your underwear. Well, apparently, sometimes they're not wearing pants because Brian Bird, uh, you know, they're they're uh, they called the police, and he says, "Hey, listen, this, you know, we do. We're this is at our home. I've got a wife and a child, and I'm the child getting out of the bath, running around the house. I mean." There's, there could be pictures that are highly inappropriate that I don't want um, any company or any person to um, to have access to. Plug, and they have a plug, really good point. Plug My Duck on the chat room uh, points out that in uh, some areas, when they come to repossess something, they say, oh, I, I don't have it. It's been stolen. I so see. this could prove that it wasn't stolen. That but it the, was in use. But the birds hadn't even got that far. They were like, no, we, nobody stole it. We own it. We yeah. made the last payment. Right. Well, the birds uh, are suing... All of Aaron's is a chain store. I actually took up, uh, took some, a look at Aaron's site, and they have a franchise system too. So I don't know if this is limited to just the franchisee. Perhaps this is one rogue guy who's a bit nuts. And looking at the PC rental agent site, they have an FAQ, and one of their FAQs is, "Is this legal?" Answer: Yes, absolutely. That's all it says. Not a problem. It doesn't say <laughs> what the use is. Right. It doesn't say what part's legal, what part's illegal. Because they don't inform people. It's not like it was in the terms of service no. and the birds didn't read it. They don't inform people at all that this keylogger software right. is on. I looked there. at the Aaron's terms of service. I didn't see anything there either. Uh, so it's to their discretion to tell people. So I don't know what Aaron's is going to do about this. They're just going to get in a lot of, well, mm. a lot of trouble. Well, it's funny that it's supposed to be, this keylogger software is supposed to be undetectable, but when you show up Nothing's, at somebody's house yeah. with a picture well, of them in their it. own home, yeah. how else did you that get it? That makes it pretty detectable right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Look what we can do. With the giant Whoops. watermark. Oh, I can't tell you how. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> All right. It's quite uh, handy, though, because there have been quite a few times I've been doing stuff on a computer, and I thought, oh, that was brilliant. And I haven't been able to, you know, like I'll do something sweet in a game. And I'd be like, oh, I wish I recorded that. You know, if I'd rented a computer from these guys, I could have phoned them up and be like, yeah, could you just give me the last, like, 20 minutes of what I just did? Because I want to put it on YouTube. I know YouTube. you're spying on me. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. You know, as long as I could, you know, upload it to my own channel. I wouldn't want them having it. Cool. It'd be terrible. According to uh, Nielsen, ni fewer people in the United States own televisions than used to. 96.7% uh, of American households now own TC TV sets down from 98.9% previously. Uh, and it has Nielsen wondering why. Two causes. One is poverty. They say people just can't afford TV sets anymore because mm -hmm. of the recession. Mm -hmm. uh, so we saw this in 1992 when we were coming out of recession. Uh, 1992, we had the, the lowest number of uh, television ownership uh, since today until today. Uh, and the other idea is that people just aren't buying tv sets when they come out of college when they start living on their own uh they're using technology instead they have a computer maybe they have a smartphone and that's how they watch their video they don't they just don't care about buying tv sets well you know it's funny we were talking um over the last couple of days about when the bin laden news hit a lot of people weren't watching tv at all you know they found other ways to get information and share information with other people well i know when i when i was coming out of college the big thing was do are you going to get cable Mm -hmm. And I, and a lot of people are just like, forget it. I'm not going to waste money on cable. Right. You know, if I have a television, yeah. a lot of people didn't have a television, but even people who did have no, a exactly. television, I mean, they Matt just watched Willard a video just come out as well. And everyone was like, have you seen the wheel? And he's like, yeah, it's bloody good. It goes fast. It rolls. You know, you've got all these, you know, modern things. Nowadays, like I'm amazed, like how many people don't have a home phone. They've just got cell phones. Right. And, you know, I think this is, is literally just the next evolution. Like we've got so many devices that are better than a TV. You know, TVs have kind of lagged behind. You know, they do 3D, not too fussed about that for most people as well. Um, I want something that's dynamic, I can get content from anywhere and share it between things. And that's where tablets and PCs and, you know, even just little media boxes are, are you know, immensely better and cheaper. 
than a, a full-size TV can be. Now Nielsen is wondering if they should count internet viewers as TV households. Yes, yeah. Nielsen, F yes. You should have been doing this for a decade now. Uh, they say that we've been having conversations with clients. This, uh, this is according to Pat McDonald, Senior Vice President for Insights and Analysis at Nielsen. That would be a big change for this industry, and we'd be doing it in consultation with the clients if we do it. Well, Why wouldn't you? Here's if the you're problem. watching Fringe you're on watching Fringe. your computer monitor, it should still count. You're watching the show. That's yes. what you'd like That's to think. I mean, the thing about Nielsen is that we have these vague numbers, okay? When you have Hulu and you have Internet, you're able to say, we have this many. We have an actual number. Now, advertisers don't want to pay for that, okay? They want to go with these vague numbers. So the networks go, we have our Nielsen numbers. Actually, so, the Nielsen numbers are, aren't vague. They pay for that actual well, Nielsen saying number. They're saying it's a household share, right? That these are still oh, no, no, estimates. No, no, no. That's not the way Nielsen... Nielsen splits things up in lots of different ways. It's but not you, just households. They go with individuals. The advertising too. rates are low because you can actually have a distinct number on Hulu. You can have a distinct number saying it's only reaching... 200,000 people. I think the advertising rates are low on Hulu because there's a prejudice against it because nobody's going to get fired uh, for buying television. Whereas if they buy an advertising campaign on Hulu and it doesn't go well, they're out. Why'd you buy an advertising on that new thing? It's, it, to me, it doesn't have to do with ratings. It has to do with the fact that it, it, this isn't folded into the traditional way of doing things. And if we actually took this and folded it in and made it part of the regular ratings, then it, it, the advertising agency wouldn't care because it would just be part of that overall number you're talking Again, about. Again, you're using logic, and that doesn't really work on the TV network. Work for TiVo. <laughs> uh, it, when when they, they had this exact same argument, well, we can't roll TiVo in because people watch things at different times, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's too complicated. They and ended up took, figuring out how to do it. Now we have years to get acceptance. So, I mean, maybe we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet with well, TV Well, we're going to have to get there if people continue to, uh, I was going to say cord cut, but I guess it would be tube tie. <laughs> yes. You think it'd be easy. Tire though. tubes. Wait. Does that have a second meaning? You're nothing but a tube tire, Tom. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've got, they've got they, they have to recognize that people are watching variety of TV shows, not on TVs, um, in other ways besides cable, and they want to count these people. Or know that these people aren't watching shows. But it must be the easiest thing to add. Like, you know, you can go onto a website and see how many people have been to that website. And you can go onto YouTube and see exactly how many people have seen that one single video. And it's the sort of thing where you think that they could just take the numbers and just add them on. You know, well, want to I asked, do you want to respond to that one too? What, logic again? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's you easy. can't use logic. Not with <laughs> television. A lot of things you can use logic in math, maybe, but not television. I or movies. you do make good points, though. I mean, I remember in in our TV days that you know tech TV used to reach however many million homes. Whether people were watching a show or not was a, a totally different number. So they would talk about the the potential people mm -hmm. that you potential. could reach, right? <laughs> nice. On the internet, yes. who watched it? That's a much more concrete. And you can number. tell if they skipped your ad, like on something like YouTube. You can actually get metrics that television usually doesn't didn't give out. So, I mean, it's just an old model versus the new model. And when they roll this in and accept it, it's going to take a while. You'll like this next story then, uh, Ayaz. This is all about logic. Let's uh, do it. <clears throat> Judge mm -hmm. Ware, uh, U.S. District Court's Judge James Ware, mm -hmm. has overruled objections uh, from folks saying that they shouldn't be forced to take a compact CQ56 in replacement for their MacBook Pro. Right. There was an NVIDIA class action suit, uh, bum GPUs, including some MacBooks. So he's, he's saying, this yeah. judge is saying that... A compact, a sub five hundred dollar notebook is good enough as a replacement for MacBook Pros. Is that right? Right. He says, in fact, quote, the compact CQ fifty six meets or exceeds nearly all of the specific specifications of the original computers. Uh, it comes with an advanced operating system, new warranty, and other programs. <laughs> Uh, as for missing peripherals, Judge Ware says the court finds that they can be easily and inexpensively added. Is it just me or does he seem like one of those comment trolls? Like you see Mac, brand new products from Apple, like on a gadget, and then you see the comments. It's like, well, you could get the same kind of thing on a Dell for like $300 cheaper. Like yeah. that's what this looks like he's to one me. Of the, yeah, he's like, eh, the Compact CQ56 is pretty much the same machine. And the other thing is he's... Except it doesn't use the same operating system, and it's in fact illegal or at least a violation of the terms of service for you to install OS Ten on a Compact CQ56. So he's, he's enabling people or suggesting to people to build Hackintoshes. Clearly, he that's what he's doing. He must be. Uh, this is all part of a, a settlement NVIDIA came to uh, to repair or replace 
uh, computers that were affected by flaws in their GPUs. And if they can't repair them, that's when they have to replace them. And they only want to replace them with compact CQ50. The Before thing- the show, I was like, I, as, I don't actually understand the story because it sounds like the judge is suggesting that Mac users would be happy with a compact CQ56. Mm-hmm. So what, what what am I missing out of the story? And he's like, no, that's a story. That's the actual story. Now, Dave A., uh, I don't like to usually pay attention to people who just repeat themselves over and over and over again because we do see you the first time and you don't need to do that in the chat room. But he does say the replacement only applies to dead HP laptops. If that's true, then this would make more sense. However, that doesn't seem to be the case according to the ruling right. that the judge handed down. There were these flawed GPUs in MacBook Pros. There were people having problems with them. Maybe there's something in the case that we didn't see uh, where no one who had a MacBook Pro couldn't have their GPU repaired. And therefore, the only people looking for replacements are compact CQ56s. But even then, people are saying, look, it's it's not an equivalent laptop. This laptop is very, very cheap. I would think the HP and Dell users would be mad about this as well. I mean, compacts are the low-end budget kind of cruddy pieces of uh, machinery out there. And the other thing is, this balances out our pro-judge approach before the break. So yeah. this, this judge, yeah. well, we don't like this so much. The conservation of judge idi- idiocy. A yeah. judge has canceled out another judge. And yes, Hartwell, I can read your notes. balance, yin-yang between the, the different brands there. Yeah. But I don't know, I kind of think that, you know, i got a MacBook Pro. I'm thinking, yeah, it looks a little bit cliche, all that aluminium. Quite fancy, a nice plastic compact. That'd be quite nice. Let's move on to the the judge. News fuse. Seagate hasn't given up on platter-based hard drives. In fact, it's breaking records. The company has introduced a three and a half inch hard drive that has one terabyte per platter, which means Seagate has a has broken a density record by packing in 625 gigabits per square inch. If you want one of these monsters, you can expect them sometime around the middle of this year. So that's pretty soon then. Yeah. I mean, it is May. We're after getting all. there. We're getting close. Ubisoft is getting into the TV and film business. The maker of games like Assassin's Creed and. Red Steel have started a division called Ubisoft Motion Pictures that will help translate its games to movies or TV. But don't expect them to make the movies themselves. The division will likely just work with production studios. Like Marvel. Yeah. There are more rumors about Nintendo's successor to the Wii. This time, hardware specs inside the console will be 8 gigabytes of internal flash storage. That's as much as was in the original Xbox. No hard drive in there, and it'll also pump out HD graphics, so like every other machine. Games will be on 25 gigabyte optical discs, and we'll find out some more solid information next month when Nintendo actually shows off the console at E3. I hope they're massive, oversized, like, laser discs. (laughs) That'd be awesome. I totally get one then. (laughs) Um, Apple updated its iMac line today. Uh, the outside of the all-in-one looks virtually identical to the last uh, edition, but inside you'll find quad-core Sandy Bridge processors and the new HD FaceTime camera. On the back, you'll find not one, but two Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt ports. Um, it looks like Apple is committed to Thunderbolt. Um, expect to see it on the rest of the Apple line soon. Intel isn't happy just being in PCs and Macs. Oh, no, it wants to be in iOS devices, too. At least that's what a Piper Jaffrey analyst says. Considering Apple is having issues with Samsung... Uh, you know, the little patent suits, the counter suits they're having against each other. This could be Intel's chance. Intel still hasn't made any headroom in the mobile market, uh, but getting a deal with Apple could be a huge jump. It'd be weird for Intel to make Atom processors, though. Mm. Sirius XM announced its first quarter financial numbers, and the revenue isn't as good as hoped, but it turns out that Sirius XM is racking up subscribers. How, you might wonder? Is it because people don't want internet or FM radio? No, it's actually something else, and it's kind of shocking. Strong automobile sales helped the company gain subscribers. Car sales? No way. That sounds crazy. If you wanted to buy Australian mobile game maker Firemint, you're out, you're too, you're out of luck. It's too late. EA has announced a deal to buy it. Firemint makes some big games for iOS like Flight Control and is also developing for Android and Windows Phone 7. The official deal is expected to wrap up in about four weeks. Up against the wall, Googlers. For the second time in a year, Google's offices in South Korea experienced a raid 
which uh, didn't feature 10 or 25 players within World of Warcraft, uh, meaning the good folks of uh, Seoul Metro, uh, Metro Police Academy stopped by and perhaps gruffly asked for boxes of information. Uh, th um, <laughs> this time, Google was under scrutiny for their mobile ad business. I mean, in August of last year, the raid was because of uh, loose women in boot. Oh, wait, no, sorry. It was uh, Google Street View data. So, yeah. <laughs> but it might have been as well. We don't know. We weren't well, privy to described as a raid. Yeah, I like it though. A raid. It's a raid by the police agency, sweet. not the academy. They Drop just, that please, search what? engine. Obviously, because Korea, big gaming nation, they probably knew that in phase two, Google would then go enraged and they'd have to spread out. Otherwise, you know, unless they kept, you know, putting on more dots. I don't know about you, but I always thought Soul Metro Police Academy 2 was, be was the better of the movies. You think so? Yeah. Probably. Mm. <clears throat> no, it was Soul Metro Police Agency. Agency, there you go. That's what yeah. happens when you can't read. Right. Uh, <laughs> you, you, did, know? you did very well for being completely illiterate. For, for completely illiterate, <laughs> exactly. I just guessed and you got 90% of it right, which is very impressive. You're not a public school man, I know. I mean, what, no. can, what can be expected? <laughs> All right, uh, finally, the finger nose stylus is the invention of Dominic Wilcox. It was part of a speed-creating project, so we're not sure we'll ever see this hit the manufacturing world. Uh, but if you're in the bath... And you uh, have put one arm down in the water and you know that you can't really use your iPad now or your iPhone. Uh, you can strap this onto your nose and uh, use it as a stylus. So his right, right hand is dry? <clears throat> is that right? Left hand is dry. Oh, wait, no. In the picture, right hand is dry. Left hand's in the water. Yeah, the whole okay. idea is, is that you get into the bath and you go, okay, yeah, I can do this as long as I don't drop my phone. But then at some point you put one hand in the water and then it's like, oh, crap. Now I have to use that hand to touch the... And oh, this is a real a thing. Tablet. This is not a joke. You could do it hey, already, think though. of all the other situations that this would come in handy. It's not just a bath. I hate taking baths. Baths are boring. Finger painting. I mm. love to finger paint. I could still be just browsing around playing Angry Birds while finger painting. You're not finger painting then. Why not? Your nose stylus painting. This works, though. Oh, you don't Tom. need a thing. I'm just doing this with my nose. Not going to play semantics. Is... Yeah, see? Yeah, you can already do it with your you nose. Just, this just adds you, an extension so that well, it's not so... You can't see what so, you're doing when you're that close to Well, it's it, like right? not putting yeah. the cigarette right in your mouth. You right. know, it's classy. Yeah, you want to have that uh, long... That's classy. That's, having a long yeah, see, appendage like, to your nose yeah. so that you don't look like a fool. And then if you lie, you're like, dude, not my fault. Yeah. Pinocchio I like right how here. this was a speed creation project because it almost feels like <laughs> they had about 20 seconds to come up with an idea. Yeah, it's true. And that was like, then they had to stick with it. it also, you apparently know. it glows, so you've got that going for you. Yeah, it's Glowing a bonus. Nose All I <laughs> is like, how many three-star levels did he get on Angry Birds? Because, you know, if it's more than you get normally, well, I'm going to buy one. Think about it. You know, with, with games, now you have an extra finger. Plus, right? you know, if you're be... not in the bath, you've got both your hands. Right. Exactly. And yeah. that's the thing. The amount of time women gamers have complained that men have an unfair advantage, now they can have an extra appendage as well. And, yeah, they can, they can <laughs> on on to the calendar. <laughs> uh, Zydo, which is, that's how we think it's, it's pronounced, it's X-Y-D-O, is launched today. It's a social news site. It prioritizes and organizes news shared on Twitter and Facebook based on users' interest. And Cameron Brain, who's one of the co-founders and has a really awesome name, says, We want to take what Dig and Reddit started and bring the idea into the modern generation. Tom, I know you're very impressed so far. Yeah, I tried it out today, uh, signed up, and uh, all of these things like Trove and News.me that have promised, like, we're going to look at your social graph, mm -hmm. we're going to adapt that, they fail. They give me you know articles about fail. puppies and, okay, I'm overstating it, but they, they don't know work. They know you better than you know you. Zydo actually worked. I actually got a list of stories that I'm like, yes, these are relevant. These are stories that are helpful. These are the kinds of things I'm looking at uh, for tech news today. These are the kinds of things I'm interested in. I mean... I, I think they actually have something that's that's worth taking a look at. All right, Zydo it is. Um, cool. The LimeWire RIAA trial begins today, and if, you know, you're falling behind on what that's all about, this is the one where the RIAA is looking to win a judgment of over a billion dollars. So a there's billion. that. One billion dollars. One billion. The next they should have Dr. Evil do it. The Nexus One gets Android 2.3.4 over the air, but sadly, G Talk video calling 
is not included. Adobe released Creative Suite 5.5 today, offers a few things, among them the ability to use tablets and smartphones to interact with Photoshop. That's pretty cool. And Microsoft is going to release Windows Thin PC, also known as WinTPC, in late June. It's form formerly known as Windows Fundamentals, and this is um, the machines that will use it. Uh, often have less disk space than brand new machines, so when TPC helps to ensure that they'll have adequate space. It's like tiny XP. Or like damn small Linux or, or DS, damn yeah, small yeah. Windows. Mm. I thought it was Win TCP, as in like it was some form of antiseptic, but it's not. It's an operating system. Yeah, so just, or if transfer you cut control yourself, protocol. it would be useless. Right. But if you have an old computer, quite handy. On to the emails, TNT at twit.tv. Mr. Perfect, that would be John R. Perfect. Uh, wrote in with a picture <laughs> from a uh, screen cap from his Windows 7 machine showing that Windows 7 Ultimate is actually Microsoft Windows version 6.1. Combine <gasps> this with the news yesterday that BlackBerry OS 6.1 is now called BlackBerry OS 7, and John points out 6.1 is the new 7. Well, thank goodness uh, they're working together. Or I guess 7 because is Because great the new minds are thinking alike. Yeah. Why didn't Adobe like call theirs? Seven instead of you know five point five sounds like because they're not because they're not six point one yeah but when who, they what, get what, to six point one then they can call it seven then they mm -hmm. call it seven okay yeah. so it only works for six point one exactly right. okay I understand now some uh, kind of like kind of base counting system simple math or fuzzy math whatever it's mold. Uh, next email from Graham uh, hi guys the use of Twitter overtakes Canadian election laws Graham, Graham. Oh, it was just spelled wrong. Yeah. Sorry, Graham. No, that's the way they spell it in Canada. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> it's like the Geoffrey thing. Canadia. Crazy. Foiled it again. Uh, sorry, Graham. Uh, Graham has pointed us to um, a global news story, but apparently, in a nutshell, Canadian election laws do not allow sharing of results from time zones where polls have closed and those in the West have not. But Twitter and other social media will most likely cause a revamp of the law with simultaneous or delayed results being implemented. A lot of folks were saying, uh, I'm going to break the law. Take me to jail. I'm going to post the results on Twitter when I hear about them. So either everybody's going to become a criminal... Or they'll change the law. Because the law is meant for when all you had was the CBC, the Canadian sure. Broadcasting Company, and they were they were preventing the CBC from broadcasting results from Newfoundland in British Columbia, uh, afraid that it would affect the polls. Frankly, I'm not sure how much this really affects things if people... I mean, I guess if you declared a winner, then people might not go to the polls, but I'm not sure how much it really matters. I'm pretty if fickle, Tom. If I was Canadian, I would basically say, oh, well, hang on, that party's popular? I'm going to vote for them. And so, you know, it's to save Canadia. Right. But that's why you're not like Canadian. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Well, that's all right. But they, they love the Queen. They love her. That, they're great. They're they her must queen. love the world. She's wedding. their Queen, too. Yeah. Last yeah. email from Umer. Hey, TNT crew. I'm surprised Tom can pronounce Abbott Abad correctly. See, even I can't do it. The city was named after British major Abbott. So its pronunciation is simple Abbott Abad. Abbott Abad. There you go. Did I say it right? I don't know. Let me know, Umer. From Did Karachi. I say your name right? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it uh, for this edition of uh, Tech News Today. Terpster, uh, let folks know where they can find you on the Internet if, they, if they've liked the little sample of Terpster we've given them today. If you'd like the tiny piece, uh, you can find all about the shows I do over at about.me forward slash the underscore T um, or on twitter.com slash the underscore T as well. So uh, check it out. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Twit.tv slash TNT is our URL, our universal resource locator, although they like to call it URI these days. At least Tim Berners-Lee says they do. Uh, you can also email us TNT at twit.tv or send us a voicemail. Give us a call. Keep it short. We might play it on the show. We'd love to hear from you anyway, though. 260-TNT-SHOW. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. TNT is a combat sport. <laughs>
I do tech. I'm sorry. I'm going to go. I, uh, I broke a glass uh, before coming in here, uh, and I you know, pressure pointed it, and it wasn't bleeding, so I put a, uh, a bandit on it. It was doing fine. Just right here Part, in the kitchen? Yeah. Tension? Partway through the show, I all of a sudden looked down, and it is, like, gushing. <gasps> I have no idea why. And it was, like, dripping on my MacBook. And, oh, so no. I was, able, I was able to grab something. Oh, uh, yeah, so I, then I'm just sitting here with blood on my MacBook, like, holding it with my thumb, trying Holy to get it to stop. Holy uh, I got some uh, tissues from Alex, uh, the next available <laughs> moment, and stopped it from at least dripping all over the place, wiped it up off my MacBook, and then uh, Ayaz was very nice and, Completely and ran and got me missed some, this. some I was just like, I thought Tom side. was feeling better. I didn't know You've he was still so a sick. You've saved yourself a fortune. Okay. on color wear. They've just started talking about they're doing iPad 2s uh, now. I need like for this bucks. show. Uh, exactly. You could, you could redo your MacBook now in red. Crimson. Work, and you've saved like hundreds of dollars. Crazy how Brilliant. fast blood dries on a MacBook Pro. Sue Twit immediately. <laughs> yes. Sue them for a billion. One billion Get dollars. yours, Merritt. Get yeah. yours. You'll all lose jobs, but I'll get mine. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs>